Hi guys, it's Lindsay here to do my thoughts on the International Learning Community for Persons and Practices Portland, Oregon Gathering. And you may be saying, Lindsay, oh, did you go all the way out to Portland? No, I did not. It was virtual and I had a scholarship. So thank you so much for that. Um, let's talk about day one and what the inter International Learning Community for Persons and Practices are, um, is actually. <laughs> it's a group of people from, you know, like Korea, all over the United States. Uh, I work with the International Learning Community. I'm on the board for it. Um, newly elected board member here, so excited about that. And I've worked with the Oklahoma Learning Community for about two years. So this is my first um, Oregon gathering, and I'm just so thankful I got to attend and fully embrace myself in the International Learning Community for Person Center Practices. Let's talk about day one. Day one, we had award recipients and this amazing, amazing speaker called Alba Gardner. Her name is Alba Gardner. Our life situations are very similar. The whole time I was like, yes, girl, you rock. You know, you're so on point. Um, I was cheering her on in my own little bedroom with my boyfriend looking at me like I'm crazy. But she was amazing and I can't tell you guys how much, I can't articulate into words how amazing she is and how amazing it was to get to know her, and just work with her and see her brain work in different ways and be stretched in different ways. And it also stretched my brain as well. Um, so day one, mentor meeting. There was a mentor and a parent. She was a mentor and a parent both. She made this comment, like my son can never teach this training and never become a trainer simply because he doesn't have the cognitive level to, you know, articulate the training. And from a self-advocacy standpoint, that kind of rubbed me, rubbed me to my core. I was mad. But, you know, it just, you always, always don't know until you try new things. If you can't do it, if you you know, like, don't want to do it. Um, I always had the mindset growing up of, you know, I try everything at least twice to make sure I fully can't do whatever it is. So, um, that kind of rubbed me to my core. To be able to learn anything from this Portland gathering, I was going to have to put it behind me. And thankfully, I did. It was kind of hard, but thankfully I did. Let's talk about the whole theory you concept that I don't fully understand. First time I've ever heard of it. What the heck is it? Um, I don't fully know. I'm reading a book about it. So if I learn anything from that book, you might see a book review on my YouTube channel. But what I did learn is from a self-advocacy standpoint we all from you know like a dsp standpoint a case man the whole thing was about dsp and supporting them in a post-covid world and how dsps how do we support them as they're supporting people that have disabilities that's what the whole thing was about so I thought that was a very interesting topic. I had the same uh, DSP for about 14 years. I'm very lucky that she hasn't left me, although she's retiring this month. I'm quite sad, but I'm happy because I get a new DSP, which is actually my mother. So I am super, super lucky that, you know, this situation of this COVID situation, a lot of things that, and this was brought up in the conference too, I mean, we, they just don't have the people that can serve people right now because of this situation, they're struggling to find people. Um, so I am very, very lucky.
I am very, very blessed. And one thing that I did learn is always presuming confidence. And that's something I already knew. But something I will take with me in a person's inner practices standpoint. Do you always want to presume confidence? You know, like some of my goals for a case manager, you know, some of my goals are like basic, basic hygiene items. And it feels like you have to check off paper. And that, and that's something that was brought up as well. You know, it just feels like you're checking off boxes. It doesn't feel person-centered. And how do we make that person-centered? By presuming confidence and really honing in on what the person needs and what the person wants for their life. And one thing that I did learn from an LGBTQ standpoint, and this really resonated with me as a self-advocate, because it doesn't always have to be LGBTQ based. Our families are not going to last forever as much as we want them to. We would love to have our family around forever. But you have to have chosen family. Who are those people that you're going to call in situations when you get in a bind? I know I have those people in my back pocket. I know who those people are. So that's something we need to teach self-advocates. Who are those people that you can call when you get into a bind? Or you don't like, you know, something that your case manager you know, has done, or I know people who have set in on people's meetings simply because they wanted somebody to be there. Who is your chosen, chosen family that you can rely on to do that? You get to choose that. Nobody else gets to choose that, you know? Um, great, great conference. Um, Michael, the outgoing executive director, was awesome and welcoming and helped me with anything that I needed. Um, and it's not just DSPs. From a school setting, this was brought up in the conference as well. It's actually a point that I, I brought up myself because I see it so much in a school setting. Paraprofessionals, they don't get paid enough. The turnover is crazy. And they do the same thing as a DSP. I mean, come on. So that was brought up in the conference. I brought that up. I'm creating new friendships and new partnerships and hopefully new work avenues and advocacy avenues simply because I attended the conference. So thank you for the friendships, partnerships, the International Direct Support Alliance I, Association Alliance. I, I don't know the entire name of it, but it's the International um, Direct Support Association. I think they had a partnership with them. Like we created all different kind of partnerships and all different kind of friendships simply because of going to this conference. And it's a family and a community who are all like-minded people. And they all want the same thing for people that have disabilities. So thank you for listening to my thoughts. Thank you for, you know, giving me the scholarships, trusting me, and making my first gathering a great one. Hope to see you next year in Portland, Oregon. Bye.